Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I've got my mixed media book out here. I'm going to do a little bit of playing in that tonight. And I also have a beautiful book that I have loved for years. I didn't know anything about this book until probably going on 30 years ago because my oldest son, Daniel, was born in 1988. I was really into Victorian things. I subscribed to Victoria Magazine. But that's back before internet and personal computers, and we would get these things in the mail to subscribe to book clubs and magazines. I'm sure a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I subscribed to a book club. When you had this special deal where you could get like five or six books to start with for you know some awesome price like $5.99 and then every month thereafter or every two months you would you would have to pick a book or either decline what was offered or they would auto ship something. This was one of the books I chose but the book itself is still beautiful and it is The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. Got a little bit of wear here. Uh, we ended up using this for homeschooling when I guess 20 years later, Michaela was about 10 years old and we would go outside and do nature lessons. It's just got the most beautiful, beautiful drawings in it. Most of you all, I'm not telling you anything new about this book. You've seen it and you love it as well because of the nature illustrations. Just look how beautiful that is. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. I want to be able to sketch more to draw more, to be more creative with images that I see in nature or even things that I see in my, in my own mind. Add to this, not long ago, I came across this little book. You can see where it's torn here, and I bet that's where some water-soluble pencils were taped into the book. I think I paid 50 cents for this, and it has got lessons in it to learn how to draw in the style of Edith Holden. Now, many of you probably already know this as well, and I remember being heartbroken the first time I turned to, you know, the informational part of this book instead of just drooling over the pictures to actually read about the author. And she drowned while collecting chestnut buds on the banks of the River Thames. Anyway, it's talking about materials that are needed a few pencils, you know, using maybe a soft pencil. I'm not sure what the number is on this one. It's an artist pencil. I do have some different ones. I have a charcoal pencil that falls into the category of a softer pencil. It says 2B, and I know so little about this. But some of the things you need are pencils to draw your little outlines, and you do that very lightly so you can go back and fill in with other media. You also need good erasers, and I do have a little drawer back here in my cabinet that has erasers in it. I have erasers here and sharpeners here and all sorts of little things. I'll show you what I'm looking at a lot of the time where you're getting a view from overhead. Ava, I always think of you when I see this. Those of you who see Ava on here, she sent me this and I love it. I look up there and picture us sitting there and having tea or coffee. Other things you need are pens and it talks about traditionally the use of fountain pens was popular and an inkwell. I have that, but I'm not really proficient with that. I have um, even just inexpensive pens. This is a Dollar Tree pen, and I actually really like these R2 pens a lot. And then my Pilot G207. I love these. You know, an ink pen is handy. With inks, it talks about inks that are permanent versus water-soluble. I have found that these uh, G2 inks, they are water-soluble, and I like that sometimes. I used that in my recent art page where you can see the ink is running, and I love that look sometimes. I, I really, really like that a lot. This doesn't run as, as readily, or maybe not at all, and then things like the Bic, I don't think it runs at all. Colored inks, you can use ink wells, but I really, really love, as you already know, the watercolor pencils. 
and it does talk about that. And you can use brushes with those. I have my um, watercolor pencils that I'm gonna use, and here's where it's talking about the brushes. And we have brushes out, sketchbooks and paper. I had no idea that there were so many different kinds of paper until I really started journaling. And then when I started working at the scrap exchange and we have learned so much about different weights and different grades of paper. I do remember these little terms from art class like hatching and cross hatching. There's contour hatching, scumbling. I did not remember that term. And this talks about the water soluble pencils and how they change in color dramatically as they dry. Here's a palette. Oh, and let me show you. One of my friends on here who I get to see locally and I've just loved getting to know Brandy better. You'll see her comments sometime. She was so kind to bring this to me. Um, I don't want to start pulling into this too much right now, but it is a lot of different watercolors. And she took the time to make this up for me. M. Graham watercolors. There are several, several different kinds in here. Isn't that beautiful? I cannot wait to start trying these. But I want to know a little bit more about what I'm doing before I break into these. Isn't this just the most beautiful little set? Windsor and Newton. I love this so much. Thank you so much, Brandy. Let's just flip through really quickly. Oh, look at this. Oh, I can't wait to do that. I love to try drawing mushrooms. So those are toadstools. Drake and duck. So this is winter, and I think in each one of these, so here we have autumn berries, the fruits of fall, so here's fall, oh, here's summer. So it is broken into seasons, and this is perfect because we are in spring right now. I guess with each season we might be looking at different techniques. You can see on this page in April, this is one of Edith Holden's primroses, and then there is the violet and a wood anemone.